biscuits with pockets of melted cheese in the center are standard fare in eastern parts of North Carolina. And you can find them everywhere, from restaurants and diners to gas stations. But today, Christy is going to show us how easy they are to make at home. I sure am. But let me tell you, cracking the code on these biscuits was a feat of mechanical engineering and lactose tolerance. <laughs> There's a lot of cheese in these babies. Well, and if you think about it, it's melted cheese inside a very delicate biscuit, and that's hard to do. Right, you gotta contain it. Right. It's not enough to put it in there, it has <laughs> to stay. So, figuring out the cheese was the first step. Now, if you live in eastern North Carolina, you're probably going to use hoop cheese, which is a yellow cheese common in those parts, but not common anywhere else. So, we had to figure out a substitute for it. We're using sharp cheddar. Oh, okay. Yellow or white is fine, but yellow is really traditional. Now, we did find that extra sharp cheddar was too dry mm. because it's aged, so you wanna stay clear of that. But sharp cheddar is great. So I have eight ounces of sharp cheddar shredded on the large holes of a box grater. Just gonna pack this with my third cup measure. Okay. Now, we found that shredding the cheddar and then forming it into balls made it melt more efficiently than just cutting it up into chunks or cubes. You don't want to buy pre-shredded cheese here, I'm guessing. No, no, because it has a coating on the outside and we want it to hold together in those balls. Okay. So we'll leave these here for a second because we got to make the biscuits, right? These biscuits, in a lot of places, are called cat head biscuits, and that really just refers to a really big biscuit, large as a cat's head, and it tends to be tender rather than flaky which is also good structurally for these biscuits. So I'm starting with two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Now we also need to have some lift. So I have a tablespoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, which is gonna help with a little browning, a tablespoon of sugar, and a teaspoon of salt. All right, now I'm just gonna pulse this about six times just to get everything mixed in together. All right. Now, traditionally in these biscuits, you'd use lard, mm -hmm. and that's delicious too, but we really love the flavor of butter in these. So I have four tablespoons of unsalted butter. I've cut it up into <laughs> quarter inch pieces. Oh, okay. The cutest little pieces I have ever <laughs> seen. Almost reminds me of those little chiclets. These are the best chiclets ever. <laughs> But we want to keep them really cold, so I left them in the refrigerator until just before we started. So I'll get that. Now, I want to pulse this until I have a coarse mixture. The pieces should look pebbly, like coarse cornmeal. We don't want to break the butter down completely, and that should be eight to 10 pulses. That looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. We still have the smallest little pieces of butter. Now, I don't want to work the butter down anymore. And I don't want it to melt from the heat of the food processor, so I'm going to put it in my bowl to work it further. All right, now, some people might argue, but I really don't think you can make biscuits without buttermilk. So this is one and a half cups of buttermilk. That's a lot of buttermilk. That's a wet dough you're it making. It is gonna be a pretty sticky dough. It is wet on purpose. Okay. But having that higher hydration in the dough is also gonna make it much more tender, and that's what we're looking for. I'm just gonna mix this until it's just combined. Okay, this looks good. You know I have to touch it, right? Sure. It's sticky. Ooh, it is really sticky for it's a biscuit sticky. dough. But I have a two-pronged plan to deal with the stickiness that will give us a tender biscuit. Cool. First, I have my half cup measure that I've sprayed with vegetable oil spray. Okay. Second is I have another whole cup of all-purpose flour in my rimmed baking sheet. This is where we're gonna land the biscuits Aha. as I portion them, and the flour will keep them from sticking to the pan. First, I'm gonna give myself some flour on my hands and I'm scooping my half cup, it's just a pretty even half cup. We wanted these biscuits to be as tender as possible, so having a sticky hydrated dough was the way to go. We measured the amount of flour that we put in the rimmed baking sheet so that we knew how much we were potentially adding. There you go. So if all of this flour goes into the biscuits, we'll still have a tender biscuit. However, if we don't need to use all this flour, even better. So I'm gonna scoop out all of the biscuits first. There should be six. So again, Julia, I have a cup of flour in my rimmed baking sheet. This flour hasn't done its job yet. So I'm going to pull up some of the flour from the tray to sprinkle on top of the biscuits, as well as forming a protective layer underneath the biscuits. And this is also the flour I'll be using to keep my hands nice and floured as I go. All right, I think we're ready for the building to commence. So with my well-floured hands, I'll pick up one of the biscuits, and I'm just gonna flatten this gently into about a three and a half inch disc. I have my ruler right here on the edge if you wanna grab that and spot me. On the nose. Three and a half? Nicely done. Okay, 
Thank you. So now I'll take one of my cheese balls, set this right in the middle, and very gently I'm going to wrap the edges up around it. The more you work with it, you'll expose some of those wet pieces, so it's okay if you have to add a little flour to keep it from sticking to your hand. So once you've pulled the edges up, we're just gonna pinch it to seal. So you don't wanna add too much flour because it'll be a little harder to pinch it. And then just look it over. We wanna make sure you don't have any bald spots. There should be no cheese showing through. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna put this seam side down into my cake pan. Now this is a nine inch cake pan, light colored, so it doesn't get too brown because we want the outsides to be tender too. I've sprayed it with vegetable oil spray and I'm just going to arrange my biscuits, five of them around the outside and one in the middle. We have our sixth and final biscuit, Julia, right in the middle, Aww. bullseye. And also as you go, if you have a lot of flour left on the outside, you can brush that off before you put the biscuits in. The last thing to do is to hit it with some butter. Ooh. So we have a crisp crust. I have two tablespoons of unsalted butter that I've melted. And we're just gonna brush these babies all over. This is why you also don't wanna have a lot of excess flour on the outside, because it'll just get kind of pasty with the butter. So we're ready for the oven. My oven is hot, 500 degrees. Oh, all the way up. All the way up. We're gonna put the biscuits in for five minutes at that super high temperature to really get that big burst of heat and a nice rise at the beginning. Then I'm gonna turn the heat down. So five minutes at 500, then 450 for the rest of the baking. So we'll get a, a more even heat until we have a deep golden brown color. Okay. Julia, I pulled these biscuits out of the oven two minutes ago. I didn't want you to have to wait. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> we just wanted them to have a little time to kind of set up before we release them from their cake pan. We'll invert them onto a plate. There's too much butter in there to stick. <laughs> There's no way. That released really nicely. <laughs> so now I'll just gently separate them and turn them over. Ooh, that smells delicious. Now these are so hot right now. So I'm actually doing you a favor when I say that we have to wait five minutes for these to cool down to a less lava-like temperature. Okay, so just five minutes. Five minutes. It's been five minutes. Pick your biscuit time. <laughs> I'm gonna go for an edge biscuit because I like the browning on that side. Okay. Although I know the center might be kind of choice. There's plenty of everything to go around. I'm dying just to pull it open and see this, oh, melty cheese. Yeah. Oh, it's like a grilled cheese sandwich inside a biscuit. <laughs> it really is. Hmm, that is good. It's amazing that a biscuit this tender could really hold all that melty cheese in. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, Julia, if you were in North Carolina in one of those restaurants or gas stations you mentioned, you wouldn't just, I mean, you might eat it like this, but you might also cut it in half like a sandwich and put a fried egg or maybe a fried chicken cutlet in there. Fried chicken. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's taking this to a whole new level. It can be a, a meal and a half if you want to make it that. <laughs> I mean, the cheese is a star, but I like the biscuit. It's a really tender, tasty biscuit yep. in its own right. It is a delicious biscuit. Christy, these are incredible. Thank you. <laughs> you are welcome. If you want to make these iconic biscuits from North Carolina, pack shredded sharp cheddar into compact balls and make a sturdy dough. Portion the biscuits onto a tray of flour, then carefully stuff the cheese into each one. Bake in a hot oven and be sure to let them cool off before diving in. From Cook's Country, a wonderful new recipe for North Carolina cheese biscuits. You can get this recipe and all the recipes from this season, along with tastings, testings, and select episodes at our website, cookscountry.com slash TV. These really are blowing my mind. <laughs> Maybe some bacon stuffed in there too. <laughs> I don't think you can go wrong with these. <laughs>